James Quincy is the president of Coca-Cola Europe. What good does Coca-Cola do you physically? Uh, I think Coca-Cola, uh, as, as the introduction said, does have some sugar in it. It, it is energy. Is it an absolute necessity? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, millions of people uh, enjoy it as part of their, their, their diet ac across the UK. Does have some sugar in it, you say? It does. Why don't you say specifically how much sugar there is in this can, for example? Uh, I think if you find, if you, you put, turn... Yeah, if you, you, on the side you see 30, you have a percentage on there, don't you? Yes, r right here on the front, uh, it quite clearly calls out the amount of uh, sugar yeah. in this can of Coke. And what 35, gra 35 grams, which is, right. which is six uh, teaspoons of sugar, uh, which is, you know, about the same amount of calories as a cappuccino or half a croissant. Uh, so there is calories. Is and it? actually, uh, what we're doing is to say, look, the information is here. We want to actually promote right. and make sure Do people you imagine do people know, know if they go to the cinema, and they get, this is a small one, and there are big ones here too. You go to the cinema and you get a, can, uh, a jug of Coke like this. Do you think people have any idea how much sugar's in it? Uh, and maybe they don't. And, 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 and I think one of the well, things we need to do... Do you know what it do... is? Look, look, look at this. 23 sachets of sugar in that single container, the equivalent thereof. Uh, now, that is a staggering amount of sugar, isn't it? Th that is why we're very focused as one of the things we're doing on getting the information out there. We're, we're not trying to hide the information behind what's in uh, a, a Coca-Cola classic. But you are trying classic, to hide it. But there's zero sugar in a Coke Zero. Uh, uh, well, clearly, it's called a Coke Zero. But a, a Coke classic, look at this one here. There's 44 packets of sugar in this one. 44! Indeed there are, and, and I think what we're saying is, look, we want to make sure that people have the information available them, to them so that they can make the choices, and if they don't want uh, the big one, then fine, and that clearly is not one that's going to be for everyone. No. We want to make sure the information is available. We well, want to make sure there's more availability of more choices, whether it's sure. smaller packages, as you but had whether, in your intro. Yeah, but whether it's 23 in something this size mm -hmm. or 44 in something this size, each of which is to be consumed in one single sitting at a cinema, this is staggering, isn't it? Look, I, I think we do need to recognise that things yeah. need to change, that the bigger oh. cups need to come down. I, I, I don't think that we are talking that the world can't change and the world doesn't move, need to move on. I think what it comes back to is we recognise that, that we need to play our part in helping to fix this very important uh, issue of obesity. It's something that's come about from you know, us taking in too many calories and not burning them off with activity, many things over many decades. And we're, going to we're taking actions. We're, we are promoting the information. As you point out, it is on the can. We're putting it in the advertising. We're, we're increasing choices of the small cans, helping people uh, manage their calories, promoting the zero-calorie options uh, if people are having trouble. So you accept your role in the obesity epidemic, do you? Uh, I think as a contributor of calories into the British diet, of course we must. I mean, soft drinks, all soft drinks together contribute 2% of the calories. Uh, uh, it's a part of it, and therefore we need to accept our role, a and we do. And that's why we want to focus on actions that we believe will help bring this crisis but under control. isn't what you're doing very similar to what the tobacco companies did when, after the link with cancer had been established, started then trying to get us all to smoke light cigarettes, as opposed to saying, don't have any of them? I think there's a very clear distinction uh, between tobacco and anything to do uh, with food and drink because in the end there's no amount of tobacco uh, that's good for you. It directly causes some of the disease. No amount. Whereas with food and drink, anything in moderation can work yeah. within your lifestyle. Maybe one of these packets in a cup of tea during the course of the day, or maybe even two. 23 in the smallest container at the cinema. The reality, people aren't drinking those. And, and, and I think what we need to focus on is, you know, if we're trying to solve obesity, it's about information. And if you have the information and, and you decide or whoever decides not to have it, absolutely fine. What we're here to do is to get the information into people's hands, help them make the choices that fit their lifestyle, uh, their choices during a week, uh, and also get out there and try and promote activity uh, with some NGO partners to try and help the other side of the equation and burn off some of those calories. Because when you actually look out there and say, has anyone actually solved the crisis? Because sometimes we look at things and say, well, you know, what will work? But what's important is to look at some of those examples where things have actually happened. There's, a, there's an approach called EPOD out there, started in France, moved across Europe, uh, is now spreading across the world, where they brought down childhood obesity by 20%. 
And it's not by taking some uh, eye-catching or simple measures. They did a number of things, bringing in private companies, health companies, local government communities, and brought down childhood obesity by 20%. Thank you very much. You're welcome.